Currently, when we start our Coconut Hut game, the network setup GUI content script simply activates the third person controller. When it activates the third person controller, our character appears in our game. While this is a good strategy for a solo game or a single player game, it's not a great strategy for a multiplayer game. For a multiplayer game, we're going to have to create spawn points. So instead of just having a static character in the scene, we're going to spawn our character using either Instantiate for the solo version of the game or Network Instantiate for the network version of the game at certain spawn points in the scene. Now, we're going to need two characters as well. Currently, we have one character, and in a multiplayer game, if both players have a character that looks the same, it can be difficult for them to tell the character apart. So, the way we're going to create our second character is we're simply going to take our existing construction worker and we're going to remove his construction hat. So, we'll have our construction worker with his hat and we'll have our construction worker without his hat. And that's how our players are going to determine which player is them in the game so they can recognize their main character. To do that, let's just quickly grab the mesh. We can do that by selecting the prefab and then coming down and selecting the controller. And down here inside the sources, we'll find the mesh. Now, I've already taken the time to make a second one, which is no hat. If we just quickly open it, you can see that I removed his hat. The way I did that was just by making this character editable, selecting the vertices in the hat, and deleting them. So now we can take this third person controller and we can make a duplicate of it. And we can call it third person controller no hat. Let's make it visible in the scene just so things are a little easier to work with. And what we want to do is drill down in here and find the mesh, which is on the pelvis. This is the mesh here. And we're going to take this mesh, the construction worker without a hat, and put that in there. Now if we take a closer look at this character, you can see we have our construction worker without a hat. So I'm just going to rearrange these prefabs a little bit. I'm going to move them up with this other prefab. I'm going to create a new folder in here. And I'm going to call it main characters. And I'm going to take the existing prefab and drag it up in there. And now I'm going to take this new one that we just created and make another prefab just by dragging it into the folder from the hierarchy. So that gives us our two characters. Now we don't need them in the hierarchy anymore. They don't need to be here. We're going to instantiate them so, so long to the static versions. Now, how are we going to instantiate them? Well, we need to create some spawn points. So, let's start with the three new game objects. The first one we're going to call spawn points. The second one will be player one. And the third one will be player two. Now we're going to position these spawn points in the scene, but before we do that, we're going to apply a gizmo to them so we can drag them a little bit easier. Just a little red gizmo. All right, so now let's take player one and put player one where we want player one to spawn in the scene. We'll just move it over here a little bit. Maybe drag it up a bit so player one will sort of drop into the scene. And then the same with player two. I might adjust these a little bit later, but for now, this should be good enough just to get something in the scene that we can use as a spawn point. So our spawn points is going to need some kind of behavior. So let's create a script. Call it spawn points. And attach it to the game object. And now let's edit this script. Okay, so this script is going to have an array of spawn points, and it's going to get that array by looking at its children and populating the array. But the first thing we need to do is create the array. So there it is, just a private array where we can store the spawn points. Okay, so we have the array of spawn points. Now we're just going to create a little piece of code, which is going to iterate over the children of the spawn point object and populate the array with the transform. So it's going to find player one and player two and put them into this array. A very simple single line of code. So we created two player prefabs and we're going to assign those player prefabs as the players to spawn at the spawn points. So we're going to create an array of default characters, come back into Unity, 
Wait for the script to compile. Say there are two characters. And they are our third person controller and our third person controller without a hat. Now we're going to need one other little piece of code. Well, we're going to need many other little pieces of code. We're going to need one right now. And what this piece of code is going to do is it's going to find using an index the spawn point. The reason we're doing this is because later when we have a network version of the game, each of the network players is going to have an index number, 0 and 1. And we're going to use this method to get the spawn point for player 0 and the spawn point for player 1.